Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching me, my name's Natasha and I'm married with two children. I've got Elise who's five and Charlie who's two. I'm sure you can already guess from the title of this video what I'm going to be talking about. Um, it's not the easiest thing to talk about. I, um, I also have a blog and I will leave the link below to the story that I wrote um, in collaboration with Pandas for their mental health awareness week. Um, and this week they are doing about perinatal anxiety so I felt now was probably the best time to share my story and get it out there. Um, I'm sorry if I seem nervous, it's a lot harder to say the words than to like type them out for some reason so um, yeah it's uh, but you know We'll, we'll get through it because if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. And the reason why I want to do it is because when I was going through it, I really struggled to find information or know anyone that went through it because I think, again, like postnatal depression and anxiety is a bit of a taboo subject still. And people don't like to admit how they're feeling, especially, you know, when they're pregnant and it's supposed to be a happy, exciting time. And for a lot of women more than you would think it it really it really isn't so a bit of background i developed anxiety when my daughter was about 17 months um that's a completely separate story one that i may do in another video but i developed it about when she was about 17 months um i got help for it and and that was that i then moved um quite a while from like away from my family and my friends and uh, just before my daughter's second birthday and we had always said that once she turned two we would like to try for another baby I could feel that my anxiety was starting to creep back I think it was um, you know the move I had to leave my job my family my friends everything and just upheaval hundreds of miles away to be with my husband for his job um, so I said you know I don't want to think about another baby um, you know until at least at least maybe two and a half three like let's get settled I wanted to find a new job and all of that but little did I know I was already pregnant and I found out about two week a uh, week or so after I'd said this and when I found out I was pregnant it was oh but I'm really gonna try not to cry um it was awful. Um, it's not how anyone should feel when they're pregnant. I took a test in the evening and there was a really faint line and it was like one of those kind of, am I, aren't I? But I just knew, I just knew in my heart and um, I just knew it was going to be a boy as well. I just had a feeling it was going to be a boy. And my husband was like, well, look, you know, we'll get a digital one, we'll try it again in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we did, that's what we did. I got up really early. I barely slept that night. I just knew that um, it was going to be positive. And all those anxious thoughts in my head of, you know, you can't handle two and this is the worst timing ever. You've just moved and just beating myself up in my head. So naturally when that pregnant came up on the test, I just, I just fell apart. Um, I phoned my mum crying and and she thought something had really awful had happened and I was like no I'm, I'm pregnant and she was like why why are you crying like this this is a happy thing you know Elise is going to get a sibling and you know you're married now and you've you know you've got a nice home and everything like why would you be crying and I thought that too why am I crying why am I so devastated like this should be a happy time um, I told a few friends and more family members and everyone said the same thing. It's just the shock, it'll wear off because, you know, we weren't, we weren't trying. Um, but weeks and weeks went on and how I felt got worse. Um, I started becoming very good at making up excuses and little white lies as to why I couldn't meet a friend or go out or do something. Um, I didn't end up going back to work. I... I hid how I felt from a lot of people. I lied to my midwife. I said I felt fine, but I didn't. I, oh, sorry, that's not a nice thing to say, but there were times I just wished that I would wake up and not be pregnant and that it would just, that it would just disappear. Um, 
and that's not an easy thing to admit because who, what mum says that about their baby, you know? Um, and I had my scan and I, I felt a connection, but not like I knew I should. Um, I didn't want to buy anything for the baby. I didn't want to buy maternity clothes. I just didn't want to accept that I was pregnant. Um, and I was becoming more and more withdrawn. I was embarrassed to tell people. Everyone was like, oh, it's so exciting and this. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's really not. Um, I felt like resentment towards the baby. And that's an awful thing to say because I was thought, oh, if I didn't feel, if I wasn't pregnant, I wouldn't feel like this. Or, um, you know, maybe, maybe because it's a boy that that's why I feel like this. Maybe if it had been a girl and it was just... It was just awful, all these thoughts spinning, spinning round in my head and then I would jump to being really excited about having the baby but then that little voice in your head tells you, well you don't deserve this baby, look at the way that you felt about it and you know, you won't be able to cope with two children, like how, how selfish are you and how this and how that and you know, you're so ungrateful, there's people out there that are trying so desperately for a baby and you're here, pregnant, you didn't even try and you're just so ungrateful you know you don't feel the way you should about this baby and and that's what anxiety is it's like another thing in your head that it just constantly beats you down and you're constantly overanalyzing how you feel um and what your body's doing and your brain and it's just it's just awful i would not wish it on anyone um um, basically, I kind of got to about 18 weeks pregnant and my husband said, Look, you know, I can tell you're not enjoying this pregnancy. I think you really need to like reach out and, and get some help because it was just getting worse and worse. Um, so I told my midwife, I just kind of poured my heart out to her and I was really scared to do it because and I sat there and I cried and I said, you know, I, I do love this baby, but I don't feel the way about it that I think that I should or I know I should. I was scared that she would judge me and that she would take my daughter away from me and then take this baby away from me and it was just a continuous circle of really negative thinking, over worrying about everything, over analysing everything. Um, so she put me in touch with the perinatal mental health team at my local hospital and I went through some talking therapy and it just changed everything it really did it was nice to have someone to talk to it was nice to understand that the way I felt was normal um and I couldn't help it because I was mentally unwell just like when you get the flu or a kidney infection or whatever like you're unwell so you need help um so I did that the cognitive behavioral therapy and talking therapy for a few months and I would say by about the last month of my pregnancy I just felt like a different person. I finally started getting excited about having another one. I couldn't wait to meet him. I couldn't wait to um, hold him and get all his nursery ready. Um, and it was just nice to to feel happy again. I spent so many months beating myself up, telling myself I was an awful person for the way I felt. Um, and that just wasn't true. Um, once he was born, um, I I struggled for the first few weeks, mainly because I was constantly going, do do I have a bond with him? Do do I, do I love him? Yeah, no, I do love him. And oh well, this has happened and that's happened. And I was I was focusing so much on the fact whether I had a bond with him that if I had just whew, relaxed. I would have seen that I did and um, once I spoke to my GP about that they you know kept a bit of an eye on me and I was fine um, but talking to my midwife was the best decision that I made and if anything that I've said resonates with you or anyone that you know go and see your midwife or your GP or if you know a person that's suffering encourage them to go and talk to somebody or contact pandas they are absolutely fantastic organization that help women during and after pregnancy and help families as well um you know the people that are affected 
I will leave all their details below. They are probably the one, if not the only website that I found details about pregnancy, um, anxiety and depression when I was pregnant because nowhere else did it. I looked on YouTube and I found minimal videos. I trawled the internet and again, I only found a handful of stories. So that is what has led me to talking about this today. It's not easy. It's not easy to sit here and say, I didn't want to be pregnant. I didn't want, um, didn't want my baby at that time. Um, but oh, now I'm going to get emotional. Like now I have him. I could not imagine my life without him. And, um, mum guilt is just normal anyway, but I will forever feel a guilt, um, for the way I felt about him. And, um, I don't want him to ever feel like um, I didn't love him or I or I didn't want him because I did deep down I did it was uh, that I was unwell and that's basically um, what it is it's not that I didn't want him and I hope when he's older and I'm sure he may watch this or uh, read my blog post that he will know that I love him and you know loved him when he was in my belly and you know, the same with his sister, they are my absolute world, so his sister, they are my absolute world, and the fact that if you're suffering with a mental illness, it's no reflection on you as a parent, it's no reflection on you as a mother, it's no reflection of you as a person, you're unwell, end of, it's nothing to be ashamed of, open up and talk to somebody, because keeping it locked up is the worst thing you can do, and because when you're left alone with your own anxious thoughts, you will just beat yourself up until there's nothing left of you. Um, so, sorry about the tears. Um, but yeah, as I've said, if any of this resonates with you, please, please, please talk to somebody, tell somebody. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay not to be okay. And if you want to speak to me, if I can help in any way, um, I will leave my email address below if you don't want to put a comment below. Um, but if you do and, you know, you've been through what I've been through or anything, like, please let me know below or get in touch um, and share this video with anyone that you think might be feeling this way. If you've noticed that a friend has suddenly started to change, isn't as outgoing as they normally would be, has gone a little bit withdrawn just talk to them and let them know that you're there for them and that there's no judgment and anything they need that you'll be there because that's what you need you need somebody to kind of understand because a massive part of it is scared that people are going to judge you I was terrified that people would think I was an awful person or a bad mum and there very well may be people that are thinking this whilst they're sat here watching it but um I know now I'm not a terrible person I'm not a bad mum I'm not the best mum, but who is? I do my best. I love my children dearly. There is nothing I wouldn't do for them. Um, but this is just part of my story and something that happened to me, but I feel has shaped me into the person that I am today. So I'm no longer ashamed to say that I suffered with anxiety and yeah, mild depression when I was pregnant. It happened. I can't change it. I can only try and do something positive with it, which is to raise awareness of it and get women talking about it, you know, get rid of this whole taboo thing around it and just make women realise that it is okay not to be okay. But I think that's enough waffling from me. Um, if you've got any questions, unsure of who to contact or how to contact anyone, please do get in touch with me. I will leave links to everything that I think will be useful below and also a list of symptoms just in case you are thinking maybe this does sound like me or someone I know. But thank you very much for watching um, and please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see any more videos from me. I do talk about a lot of different topics and I am also part of the Channel Mum website where there are other ladies that are in the same situation as me or have been or suffered with postnatal depression as well. So do um, have a look on the website and there'll be lots of other women talking about subjects like this. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.